Hello, Olivia. Um, how exactly would you describe yourself and the work you do? Hi, Sam. Thank you for having me. Um, it's great to be able to, yeah, come on and talk to you about veganism. So, uh, yeah, my name's Olivia. I've been vegan um, since October of 2020. So, uh, just over, yeah, two years now. So, since I went vegan, I've I've really kind of learned a lot about uh, about the animal agriculture industry, about you know why it's a cause of for concern and 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 actually what has happened and what are the processes involved to get uh, meat dairy eggs leather wool you know onto our plates or into our clothes or any animal products really um and then yeah on the flip side of that i've learned a lot about the uh, benefits of a plant-based food system and what what that can mean for the world and actually why it's going to be part of the solution to some of the world's biggest and most pressing issues at the moment yeah so basically that was sort of the introduction and then about a year ago I just decided that I wanted to start speaking out about the issues it was all well and good me being vegan but I actually wanted to do something about it and and yeah so that's I guess when you could say I became an animal rights activist or an, an advocate for the animals um, and in terms of, of what I do I like to use social media so I make YouTube videos I use um, Instagram it's a great platform for spreading uh, spreading messages um, and I also do uh, street activism so this comes in the form of things like demos and uh, cube of truth setups and they're really great because you get to engage real people on the street you get to talk to them you get to ask them questions and really find out about you know why why people do what they do and, and why people choose to to partake in, in, in different behaviors and, and all of these sort of things and I've also done a few presentations as well at uh, school um, so that's that's been great oh, too. Nice. Yeah. For you, you personally, what does it mean to be a vegan activist? What does that actually entail? I guess for me, it's about it's about giving a voice to the voiceless, just like other social justice issues. There are billions of land animals and trillions of fish around the world who are, um, by virtue of the fact they're animals, they can't speak out. They can't stand up for themselves. So it's about you know being an advocate for 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 these these individuals and. And, and also the, the industry is very good at hiding them. They are stripped of their identities. They're, they're, they're treated as, as objects. And often people don't have to face the reality of what goes on. A lot of the people that I meet in uh, you know, street activism are very shocked because they've never actually considered you know, what, the, what the lives of these animals that they eat and, and consume might actually be like. Yeah, so I guess it's about giving a voice to the voiceless and, and spreading, spreading the message to, to people so they understand more about where their food and, and other animal products come from. You know, in the past, there have been quite a few food trends. Yes. I don't know if it's defined vegan as a food trend, but you've had like low carb diets, superfoods. Yeah. But you know, what, What's different about veganism from the rest of those food fads? Veganism isn't strictly a, a diet. Obviously, food and, and dietary choices come into it, but it's actually more of a, a lifestyle choice. Um, it's about, well, the, the definition is about trying to reduce suffering to sentient beings as far as is practicable and possible. And unlike kind of other other fad diets and, and dietary trends, it's, it's actually a, a social justice issue at the heart of it. And it's just like other other social justice issues there are victims yeah it's about standing up for the victims and making their lives better what what sets it apart from the other other kind of fad diets is that it's about yeah it's about justice at its heart not just i don't know weight loss or or um, something in vogue magazine <laughs> well, Matt, why should we be vegan what, what's what's in it for us you know what's in it for the planet what's in it you know yeah why should we well, lots. Um, but OK, so, yeah, firstly, and obviously most importantly, it's a significant, well, by choosing to live a vegan lifestyle, you significantly reduce animal suffering. You don't eliminate it. We can we always have to eat and, and, and all of this sort of stuff. But it, what it does is it significantly reduces suffering and you no longer pay into industries that profit off the exploitation um, and slaughter of of sentient beings. And these sentient beings pigs, cows, chickens, fish, all of, all of them, they're, they're, you know, highly intelligent, conscious, sentient individuals, just like ourselves. Um, they can feel pain, they can feel pleasure, they can suffer. And also these, these are beings that don't want to die and they don't have to die. So it's, it's actually a lot about empathy. It's about putting yourself in the shoes of these, of these animals and, and thinking, if I were in their position, what would I want to happen to me? Would I want to be slaughtered at a fraction of my lifespan and made into a burger for somebody? Or 
<laughs> would I not want that? And, and so that's the first bit. Um, and, but then, you know, there are other amazing reasons. So environmental reasons, the greenhouse gas emissions from the animal agriculture industry is about 14.5% of all human made uh, GHGs. And, and for context, that's larger than the whole of the transportation sector combined. And this is just animal agriculture. It is immense how, how, how much of, a, of an impact it's having on our environment. And then you've got, you've got just emissions, but you've also got things like biodiversity loss. You've got deforestation, water pollution. I mean, there are lots and lots of studies uh, about animal agriculture and its impact on the environment. And one of the biggest ones was a study by the University of Oxford in 2018. It was a massive study. I think it looked at like 40,000 farms across the globe. And the author of the study at the end stated in an article, I'll read it out for you, a vegan diet is probably the single biggest way to reduce your impact on planet Earth, not just greenhouse gases, but global acidification, eutrophication, land use and water use. So in terms of environment, it's the impacts of, of a plant based diet and lifestyle is immense. And then you've also got things like antibiotic resistance. 66% of the world's antibiotics are currently given to farm animals, not not people. And, and um, uh, we all know that this is going to become a really big problem for human beings in, in the next uh, in the next kind of century. And, and then you've got things like pandemic risk, having so many animals trapped in, in systems of farming that are dirty, disease ridden and confined means that it's a basically a ticking time bomb for the next global pandemic. COVID will not be, I imagine, the last one that we will see in, in, in our lifetimes. And then and then you've got things like world hunger. So currently around the globe, 36% of global crop calories are consumed directly by animals. And yet we have millions of people around the globe who aren't getting enough food at the moment as it is. The more you read into this, the more you read that our food system is really not, not functioning well. Yeah, so we've got all of these reasons. And, and actually something that I heard the other day, which I think is, is good, is that t if you take these reasons, each of them individually, each of those reasons individually is enough of a reason to go vegan. But we've got all of them together. We've got all of them. We've got the ethics and the morals. We've got the environment. We've got pandemic risk, antibiotic resistance, world hunger. And, and actually, all of them together makes such a convincing, overwhelmingly convinced, convincing argument for veganism and a plant-based food system. But so, so if it's such a convincing argument, yes. why is the debate surrounding vegan so polarising? Yeah. And then why isn't it universally accepted? And then following on from that, how, would you, how do you approach individuals who... I want the other side of the debate, and they're like, oh, no, I want to eat my yeah. meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, why is it accepted? Well, because, I mean, it's a, it's a multifaceted issue. Why do, why do people do what they do? Why do good people partake in harmful and, and um, abusive and cruel practices? I mean, there's a whole branch of psychology that just looks at this. But, it, I mean, broadly, at least from what I have experienced speaking to people, you know, we consider eating animal products to be normal. It's something that we grow up with and, um, you know, we call ourselves animal lovers, but yet we partake in these industries that do the antithesis of anything but lovely to animals. Culture plays into it as well. Um, social connections, people enjoy eating and actually people hold their food choices very close to them as part of their identity. And that's, that's something that I often talk to people about, you know, um, Christmas dinner. What would Christmas, people say things like, what would Christmas dinner be without, you know, your turkey in the middle or something like that. And, and all of these factors, these socio, like these psychological factors play into why, why people find it so hard to talk about this and why people are often quite defensive and, and not very open-minded when it comes to veganism. Do you think there's a cultural problem there? Yes, ab well, absolutely. Why veganism is but do you think one day it can be universally accepted? You know, is, it, is it possible to completely change like, yeah. cultures? I think, I, I don't know, is the, it's a great question, but actually I don't quite know the answer and I think it, it's a tough question to answer. But what I would say is that whether or not it becomes universally accepted, we might get to a point where it doesn't have to become universally accepted. I'm thinking about things like lab-grown and cultured meat. Hopefully when these products hit the market, become accessible, whether people have or have not made the change to veganism by that point, hopefully the, the system will change in the sense that they, they won't have to have made that change. Hopefully we'll be able to dismantle these industries. I mean, we're talking about, I don't know, decades here, potentially not even in our lifetimes. I think there will always be a place for veganism. Just like 
you know, think people who campaign against things like homophobia and racism, um, you know, hopefully we might get to this amazing world where we don't have any racism and homophobia in our society anymore. But that doesn't mean there won't be a place for people who speak up against these issues. Um, and sure. it's the same same for veganism. You know, there will there will always be people who gonna who are gonna exploit and be cruel towards towards animals. So um, yeah, I think I think having this social justice movement will be necessary. Perfect. And um, so you, you spoke a lot in your arguments um, in favour of veganism about yes. the importance of sentience as being an important factor in supporting veganism. Mm -hmm. But if sentience is a uniting factor between all species and the reason why we shouldn't we should be vegan, sorry. What, what what's not stopping us from preventing other non-human animals from harming other species like what's not what's, the, what's what's not stopping us from saying to a lion actually no you can't eat that zebra because actually you're, you're just another sentient being that looks just like me and yeah because i find in these uh, ideas of, of veganism you know, the idea of humans being rash, uh, like rational mm -hmm. and then it, it doesn't really come into play and they always talk about the importance of sentience so what what, what, what separates us and what makes us more important in our actions with other species yeah. and other species, you know? Non-human animals that eat other animals, so like the lion that eats the zebra or the gazelle, uh, they do so out of necessity. You know, if we use the lion example, they are obligate carnivores. Uh, they have to eat these things in order to survive. You know, the, the lion can't go down to the supermarket and, you know, buy some vegan options or something like that. And yeah, so it comes down to this, this uh, idea and notion of necessity. Me and you, we, we don't have to eat animal products to survive. And actually, according to the you know, health research, we can actually thrive on a completely plant-based and vegan diet. And we also have, you know, we have the resources, we have the means and the information to choose something else. These are things, you know, lions and, and other animals in the wild, they don't have these, these resources. And also, we as human beings have moral agency, a high level of moral agency, uh, which means we can evaluate our decisions, we can think about, um, you know, we can think about the moral issues surrounding eating animals, we can think about the environmental issues, we can think about the public health considerations. We are able to weigh these things up and down in a way that animals in the wild, like the lion, cannot do. And, and I think when we have this moral agency as humans, <sighs> It's that quote, isn't it? With great power comes great responsibility. We actually have a responsibility to be choosing the things that are um, the best for the environment, but also the best for, for the animals and, and the sentient beings who, who we can choose to not eat and, and, and therefore reduce suffering. So yeah, I, I guess it comes down to necessity and, and moral agency. Okay, and, and then finally, um, so, so some may charge veganism with being elitist or coming from a privileged perspective because in, in a world where there is so much human inequality yeah. and we don't believe in a current cost of living crisis, so how do you expect everyone to adopt veganism when they have other imminent challenges to tackle or simply cannot afford a vegan lifestyle? You know, how, how would you tell a, a single mother living on food coupons that actually know you shouldn't have that meat product even though it's only available, that we should be vegan, you know? You know. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I totally understand. And like you said, with the, the cost of living crisis, a lot of a lot of people all around the world at the moment are really struggling <laughs> with the, just getting food on the table, let alone what kind of food that is. There's a re there was a really interesting study that was came out in 2021. It was again also by uh, Oxford. And it actually it's actually said something really interesting. It, it concluded that in high income countries, so like the UK and like America and, and, and other yeah, high income countries, that vegan diets were the most affordable diets and they could actually reduce food costs by up to one third. And when you think about the staples of a plant based diet, you know, we've got fruits, we've got vegetables, often these can be frozen, which are extremely cheap. We got, we've got grains, legumes, beans, uh, tinned tinned goods and and often these are the cheapest items in the supermarket anyway you know of course you can be an expensive vegan you know there are loads of really high-end vegan products just like there's high-end cuts of meat and, and high-end you know steaks um but actually what this kind of study showed is that in a time like the cost of living crisis being vegan can actually help you save money um because a plant-based diet can be the most uh, cost-effective diet there is. Now, there are certain individuals in certain parts of the world, um, and I'm thinking here people who live in indigenous communities, but also uh, pastoralists in very, very low-income countries. And these, these people live in a situation where they require animal products to survive. Uh, they have no other choice. They do not have the means to be vegan. They do not have 
um, you know, or even the access to be able to be vegan. So for these, these certain individuals in certain parts of the world, it doesn't make sense. They need to get the calories into their body and, and it really is a situation of necessity and survival. But again, you know, the people that are watching this YouTube video when it goes out or reading your article, that's not the situation that they're in. And then, yeah, I guess this brings me on to the point about privilege. Often privilege is sort of used against veganism, but actually it's, it's, it's more of a positive thing. And I, I'd like to spin it in a more positive light. Yes, veganism is privileged in the sense that, as mentioned before, not everybody has the means to be able to be vegan. But we are lucky enough to live in 2023, um, where we have knowledge about nutrition. We have amazing, most of us have amazing plant-based products in supermarkets. And it's actually every single day, it's becoming easier and easier to be vegan. And, you know, we no longer live in a time where we have to slaughter animals to survive. Um, and therefore, with every choice that we make, with every food choice, we have the power to make positive changes um, to the world and, and, and in, in so many different areas as discussed before. So then I think, yes, it's a privilege, but actually it's, it's a great privilege to have. And actually when we have that privilege, we should, we should make it. And actually when we have the choice to reduce suffering, it actually then becomes kind of a moral obligation to take it. Do we say to when we have the privilege reduce suffering? Yes. Do we not have the priority first though? to attempt to reduce human suffering there's so much human suffering yeah. so much human inequality yeah how, how you know, if, you're, if you're telling you know, the the uh, the victims of the turkey syria earthquake yeah. actually the priority is to put suffering suffering with other yeah. species first yeah yeah you know that's quite a difficult um pill to follow yeah absolutely i mean social justice issues aren't mutually exclusive we can do yeah. both at the same time we can be against human suffering and help other human beings out and help with you know the people of the victims of the war in ukraine and the earthquake and other things that are happening in the world at the moment but we can also at the same time stand up for the animals and and um try and reduce animal suffering and listen we ha we all have to eat something right we have to eat something x many times a day whether you eat twice a day three times a day whatever okay when we eat what we do well we have we either cook something we either order something we either go to a restaurant for a lot of people there are options here and there are choices that we have it could be the sense that those three times a day when we eat we can eat vegan and be done with it and that rest of the time in our day we spend dedicating to these other social justice issues like the victims of, of the earthquake and, and, and all of these things so i guess we can do both at the same time and that's that's something that we can do and, and when we have that choice we should take that choice thank you thank you very much for the time Olivia. thank you thank you for having me it's been a great conversation with great questions really great questions <laughs> yeah 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 i was at um a demo on on wednesday and um yeah i had a i had a 20 minute discussion with a man who was trying to convince me that carrots did carrots had a soul <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually so it's nice to have um have kind of a different discussion with somebody else. Well, first, I, 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 I'm vegetarian since January. Amazing. Um, because I told myself, especially as I'm being uncated for, yeah, I genuinely have the choice not to eat. I have really good vegan vegetarian options. Great. So I think for me to have them to not eat those. To not eat those vegan options, I think for me, like I can't, Maury, I can't really justify that. Yeah. But when I have a choice, you know, like you said, the choice and necessity, mm -hmm. and also because study philosophy, we had a whole like series of lectures on veganism. Amazing. I have an essay on it. And I thought I found it really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, so I, mean, there's, there's, I think from vegetarian to vegan would be quite a big step for me. But what's holding you back? See. If you have to say something that's holding you back, what would it be? Um. Well, I, 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 it's just, I think it's laziness. <laughs> quite possibly. Yeah. And also the fact that you know living at home. Where yes. I, I, my, my parents, I, I, I don't cook for myself at home all the time. Mm -hmm. So my, my, you know, my parents cook for like, the whole family. And you know, to, to say to my, my dad, you have to be vegan, I, you know, I, don't, I don't think he'd be happy that. Or, yeah. or he's like, Sam, maybe you should be pescatarian. Um, <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> yeah. Also, so like, because veganism is a whole, like, it's a whole lifestyle. So yeah. Like, like, the clothes I wear, it is, absolutely. Um, but it doesn't have to be this massive change. And I think that's a lot yeah. of people from the outside looking in think that it's some sort of crazy life-changing thing you know you suddenly start doing yoga and wear your hair and braids and all of this sort of stuff but it, it doesn't have to be that and actually a lot of people can just go vegan and just just sort of it the more the, the very quickly after I went vegan I actually realized that it's not as hard as people make it out to be um yeah. and with the the parent thing I totally understand that and um yeah I was again speaking to a, a girl about our age at a demo the other day who had the same issue which is that 
you know, when she goes home and her parents cook for her, she doesn't want to seem ungrateful and not, you know, yeah, get the food and all yeah, of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, with the, with the laziness thing though, and I, I'm going to challenge you a bit on this, and I'm going to say, um, <laughs> what's worth what's worth more? Yeah, the animal's whole entire existence, or or your kind of uh, laziness and your reluctance. The obvious answer is the animal's existence. <laughs> yes, I, I, that's the obvious answer. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'll, I'll try to justify in my head saying, oh, you know, if I'm drinking milk, I'm not killing the cow, you know. But obviously there is suffering involved, mm-hmm. you know, in you know, production of eggs and milk and, yes. uh, let's say, wool. I, I could yeah. understand that. But, you know, I, 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 I think for me, the next logical step is to be vegan. Mm-hmm. You might actually want to be like a, you know, a, a moral human being. <laughs> but, um, it, it, well, yeah. I'll, 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 yeah. yeah. I, don't have, I don't have excuse. I don't have excuse. I don't have excuse, Livia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's, that's great. And it, clearly you've been thinking about this and I can tell, like, I can immediately tell when I speak to people now if, you know, people have already been considering these issues and, and thinking about it yeah. themselves. And I, I can de- definitely tell that. I ate meat for the first 14 years of my life. I made, ate animal products for the, the first 16 years of my life. Um, yeah. It's everybody's on their journey and everybody's at different stages. Um, and, and I have to be careful not to, I don't know, not to forget that I also contributed to these things that I now speak out, out uh, about. And, and that's important too. Quick thing with the, the milk, all dairy cows end up in a slaughterhouse, just so you know. Oh, really? Yeah, because their milk production wanes off uh, about four pregnancies, um, so they can no longer produce any milk. And it's the same with all egg-laying hens. Basically, the the, the general rule is, as soon as they no longer become profitable enough for the farmer, they'll be taken to the slaughterhouse. Yeah, that that makes sense. I I said, I never thought of that. I I understand there might be something involved in the production of milk Mm -hmm. and eggs, but okay. So you you basically do directly contribute to their... Yeah, absolutely. And actually, the dairy industry is... In, in my opinion, one of the most abusive industries of the whole animal agriculture practice because dairy cows are go through repeated cycles of pregnancy, pregnancy, pregnancy. They get their milk taken from them and then they also get their babies separated from them forcibly because the more the more milk the calf drinks, the less the farmer can sell. So it's it's not profitable for the, the calf to be with the mum, so they, they end up take, being taken away from them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I might try to bring like gradual incremental changes. Yeah. Right? So I think for me, if That's I go brown I cheese straight away vegan, or even like, like, for me, when I became vegetarian, I kind of decided overnight, I'm like, I would be vegetarian. Mm-hmm. I, or in my body, was like, oh my God, Sam, so much fiber. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if I was to you know, adopt the vegan lifestyle, I think I, it has to be like gradual changes. Like, you know, slowly, okay, first of all, I'll start taking eggs out of my diet. Yeah. And then milk, and then I think about the clothes I wear. And then I think about other foods and stuff like that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, that, that's, that's what a lot of people do, and that's what I did to some extent. Um, I guess I also considered, because I, I had dogs, and I, I still have um, dogs, um, I, yeah. it, for me, it became... I just remember one point, like looking at my my, my boo boo, my favorite animal in the world, and thinking, <laughs> I, I I love you to bits, and I would call myself an animal lover, and I would protect you at all costs, but yet I'm paying into industries that very you know are taking very 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 similar animals, just as highly intelligent, just as you know conscious and sentient, and are are exploiting yeah. you, and and I just looked at my dog, and I just thought something something's not right in my brain and and it's confronting this cognitive dissonance it it takes a long time but um yeah it's great to see that you you have been thinking about it and um clearly making some some good good changes yeah thank you very much but also i've actually there's some i'm including my questions but i want to hear a lot you know about vegan foods like almonds and avocados yes and how they are also incredibly bad for the yeah. environment, especially like you'll find avocados in South America. Yeah. Uh, avocados in South America, you know, almonds are incredibly water intensive. Yes. Um, yeah. Or you think about the, the growth of cotton, you know, for clothing, which is, yeah. you know, incredibly water intensive as well. Yeah. In terms of environmental, does that, is that less then than just. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, it's a good question and, and um, often non-vegans like to use the almonds and the avocados to kind of uh, discredit veganism but actually firstly we have to we have to caveat that almonds and avocados aren't specific to veganism they are products that are also eaten by non-vegans firstly so it's not yeah. directly yes. a problem of, of, of veganism per se and um, with the avocados thing there was an interesting study by uh, I'll send it to you it's called it's our world in yeah. data. And it looked at this very exact issue. So it compared, it compared 100 grams of avocado um, that was 
uh, somewhere like South America or, or, or produce somewhere like that. And it looked at 100 grams of, of beef that was locally sourced. So like a, a, a locally sourced animal product. Yeah. And um, I think, I can't remember the exact numbers, but avocados did score worse on water, but in every other, in every other scenario, the, the, the locally produced beef burger did a lot worse. Oh, wow. uh, okay. yeah, in yeah. emissions, in, uh, in, in, in the other metrics as well. And also the thing with um, transport, things like avocados and almonds that are being shipped in, firstly, transport and, and transportation costs only contribute to a very small percentage of a food's environmental footprint. And the general kind of consensus in the, in the kind of scientific community is that what you eat is far more important than where your food comes from. You know, now, of course, if you can choose a product that is more locally sourced, that's great because you're going to be cutting down on those transportation and food miles. But generally, what you eat is more important. So even those locally produced animal products tend to have much, much higher environmental footprints than even avocados. And um, avocados also very rarely get... Uh, shipped on planes they're much much more commonly traveled by boats uh, as far as okay. i can tell yeah. so yeah obviously within a plant-based diet there are certain types of plant-based foods that are worse for the environment 100 percent. but generally and, and kind of more average looking is that plant-based foods tend to have a much much lower environmental costs perfect yeah. well thank you again thank you so much for the time i will um hopefully next week write up the article I'll, I'll, I can send it to you for proofread as well, just to check. Oh yeah, perfect. It's quite I, I completely <laughs> trust you, Sam. I've known you for a long time, and I, I trust your studiousness and um, and hard work. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Lydia. Well, have a lovely day. Yeah. Good luck for the rest of your time. Thank in you. Berlin.